Welcome back to Fuzzy Tutorials. I'm Fuzzy D. Today we're discussing how to use the Fusion Loader node for video clips. But I just figured out how to do this the other day. I've been trying to do it off and on for years since I found out about it in DaVinci 17. But um, this is the first time I had a, a real serious need to do it. So I finally did the research and figured it out. And it's surprisingly simple, so I thought I'd share it with you. Let's get started. Okay, here we are in uh, DaVinci Resolve uh, on the Fusion tab. And I just want to play a quick animation uh, just to show you this, where I learned how to do this, was building this. Uh, now, I just want to give a shout out to um, the YouTube channel I watched to learn how to make most of this effect. And then I, of course, made some changes and added my own stuff and turned it into an actual standalone effect after making a macro. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. So I'm just going to play it through uh, once. And on the right hand screen is the full effect. And on the left hand screen is this node right down here called out, which is actually a loader node. So the loader node will show here what it's uh, displaying. And then this is the full effect over on the right. So let's play it. So you can see this sequence here is just a video sequence. It's very simple. And then I brought it into a D keyer to pull out the background and match the color correction that I've used on the rest so that I can change the color of this. And that's basically, basically it. So I'm just showing you that it works. And now we're going to show you how to do it. So let's take a look at how we're going to do this. There's a couple of steps to doing this. So the loader node itself can't really load and play a video clip per se. It, it won't do it in its natural video format. So what we have to do is take a video. So I just have a little clip here, just a few seconds long. And we can take that clip and turn it into a bunch of screenshots, essentially. So every frame, uh, we're going to convert this to a PNG photo that will go in this folder here. So to do this, what I did is I copied the video into here. If you aren't already aware, I'm doing this on Linux. So these instructions I'm showing you uh, the specifics of, of course, are built for Linux. But if you can find another way to create the sequence in, say, Windows or Mac OS, you might even be able to use the same program I'm using here. I just I, I'm not sure if it's available on the other platforms in their native operating system uh, formats. So uh, what I'm showing today is how I'm doing this uh, in Linux. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click in here and I'm going to say open in terminal. It just saves me some time. So that's that's opening it in the, in the correct location. Uh, let me see if I can zoom this in a bit for you. Okay, hopefully you can see that clearly. So all I'm going to do in this folder is I'm going to execute a single command. And this is using ffmpeg. Now if you're using DaVinci Resolve in Linux, you will already have installed ffmpeg just to be able to do stuff uh, with DaVinci Resolve or a lot of other programs. So uh, if you don't have it already installed, you can just do uh, sudo apt install ff or ffm peg. And that'll install it for you. Now it's already on my system, so I'm not going to do that. So I've got a command here that I've got saved off in my little cheat sheet because I can't remember all this stuff. <laughs> so 
I'm just going to paste this command in here. Okay, so I'm just going to replace this name with the actual current file name. So, uh, dominoes falling dot mp4 and we'll just execute the command. So now it's doing its thing. Now some of the things that I did here, um, so this FPS equals 30, you can use whatever that video clip is done in. So if it was done in 60 frames per second, then you say 60. If it was 24, then you put 24 in here. So other than that, it's pretty basic. Didn't take long. It gives you a readout at the bottom, total number of frames, all that kind of thing. It's not really that important. So now you'll notice that we've got all these files. Now we've got this original clip that was converted. I'm just going to delete that. We don't need it in here anymore. And you'll notice they're all in sequence. So out one, two, three, four, and so on. So that's basically kind of all you have to do. And then when we use loader, we'll grab just the very first picture of the sequence and it'll automatically grab the rest. So I'm just going to close that. And we're just going to drag this off the screen here. And we'll fire up Resolve. First thing we're going to do is create a, uh, a fusion project. So I'm just going to choose the right bin and I'm going to create a fusion composition. Now, it doesn't really matter how long I'm, I'm making it. Um because you don't have to use all of the pictures in the sequence. So let's call it demo, frame rate, 30 FPS, and start time code set to zero, duration, five seconds. I'm actually gonna increase that a little bit. So let's just make this uh, 10 seconds. So I'm just gonna take this Fusion effect, stick it on the timeline, make sure it's selected and go into my Fusion tab. Okay, so let's grab a loader node. So I'm just gonna hit the uh, shift space bar. And this should work in all the platforms. And then we're to LD for loader. And now it immediately is asking for our location. So, okay, so now that I've uh, selected that folder that we just created that in. We'll select that first image and hit open. Now we didn't actually need the merge in there, so let me just take that out. So we can actually just take this and pipe it directly into the media out. Doesn't really matter. So now you'll see we've got the image here and we can set our global in and out. So now that we've got it selected, you can see we've got 300 frames. I'm just going to adjust our global in and out so that this number right here in the middle of trim matches our number of frames. Like, there we go. So now we're on the last frame and we've got an image. Now we can rewind to the beginning and let it play. Now right now it's moving slow, of course, because it's processing and caching. But um, we've got it working. It's playing our video sequence. We just had to do a little extra step to get this working. Now there was another method that I was trying first using a saver node, which you can take a sequence, attach a saver node to an output, and then play the sequence and then have it save it to a special type of file. And you can attach that to a a uh, loader tab. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know if it's just a problem with my installation or if it's an issue with Linux, but I can bring the saver node in, I can attach it, but when I go to actually render all saver nodes, it the command is disabled, it won't work. So this was the method that I figured out that works for me in Linux. If you're not aware, I'm running a distribution of Linux called Mint version 22. If you feel we've earned it, 
Please take a moment to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next video. If you're looking to get DaVinci Resolve installed in Linux Mint 22 or Linux Ubuntu or Debian in general, uh, check out this video right here. See you on the next one, folks.